As you know, we're hearing so much more about creatine, but what about creatine for women? Well, if you've been watching our YouTube channel for any length of time, you know that in 2021, we highlighted one of the most important papers that really helped to change the conversation about creatine for women. I will link that video right here, but we have an update here. This is a narrative review paper that was published in the journal of the International Society of Sports Medicine titled Creatine in Women's Health, Bridging the Gap for Menstruation Through Pregnancy to Menopause talking about the importance of creatine. Now, there's a lot of perceptions around creatine. I think women think, oh my gosh, I'm going to retain all this water or my hair is going to fall out. So I want to address those two uh, myths before we even get going. Number one, the myth that creatine causes hair loss has been fully debunked by a recent paper that I can also highlight because we covered that story recently where in investigators randomized people to take either you know, cornstarch or creatine for 12 weeks. They looked at all these objective markers of hair follicular health and found that creatine supplementation does not in any way compromise the health of your hair follicles. Uh, there was a study in rugby players, I think it was in 2016, where they were doing a loading dose of creatine, 20 grams per day. And at the end of the intervention, the, there was a statistically significant increase in a hormone, a derivative of testosterone known as dihydrotestosterone that is linked with challenges within the hair follicular health. But it turns out that those athletes that took the loading dose of creatine also gained more lean mass. They probably had more strength and that was just a compensatory hormonal response associated with the improvements in their training. Okay, so the other thing is with regards to the water retention. Of course, we know that creatine helps draw water into muscle cells, but it's dose dependent. So if you are worried about water retention, especially around the luteal phase of your cycle. You don't want to get bloated and, and all that if you're female, menstruating female. Well, what do you do? Well, just don't take super physiologic amounts of creatine, maybe just five grams a day or two and a half grams per day. You know, the functional dose of creatine isn't as high as people think. Now, I know there's a lot of folks who are taking really high doses of creatine, 10, 20 grams per day, especially in context of jet lag and sleep deprivation and optimizing cognitive health and all the, all the rest. But we should just be focusing on, especially if we want to avoid water retention, around two and a half to five grams per day. And that's why, small plug, when we created the creatine enhanced electrolyte sticks by myoscience featuring the creep here creatine raw material we just put two and a half grams in there because we assume that most people are eating an omnivorous style diet and now we have since launched you know micronized standalone versions of the european manufactured raw material or unmicronized you know depending upon whether or not you're sensitive to gastrointestinal distress associated with creatine but getting back to creatine for ladies why does this matter well it turns out that women store less creatine and synthesize creatine at lower rates. Let's hear what the investigators say. They said some reports demonstrate that women have 20% lower synthesis rates as well as 30 to 40% lower dietary creatine intakes on averages, on average. And so I think that's important. But it's important to recognize that creatine is really important for women involved in bone mineral density, mitochondrial function, ATP function, cellular hydration, Mood, I think really important. We know that women suffer from mental health issues disproportionately higher compared to men. And because creatine is really important for basically brain energy metabolism. And so um, if one is suffering from any mood condition, whether it's a personality disorder, a mood disorder, a mental health issue, they should absolutely consider creatine. And we also know that one study in the UK found that uh, when it was a mixed gender study, when individuals are doing cognitive behavioral therapy, when they pair that with creatine, they experience better objective outcomes. So I think that's important. Okay, so getting into creatine throughout lifespan, we obviously know that as both men and women age, we both lose muscle mass. We know that creatine is really important for muscular strength and muscular endurance and you know preventing uh, trips and falls, uh, muscles are important there. So anything that we can do to make our muscles uh, have a uh, more cellular energy, energy production, I think is a, is a really good thing. Okay, so getting into some of the reasons specifically um, why women may want to consider this, and we'll talk about throughout the lifespan. I think this is really important, especially for pregnancy. So 
it turns out that when you build the baby, there's a lot of energy that needs to go into building a baby. I mean, who knew, right? We need a lot of resources, a lot of blood, a lot of nutrition to build a human being. Well, so the placenta is very energetically demanding. And this is where creatine shines throughout the body. So when you're moving your muscles at the gym or during running or exercising or sprinting or CrossFit, or when you're doing cognitively intensive tasks, especially after sleep deprivation, this is where creatine helps because it helps with cellular energy production and energetically demanding tissues, the eyes, the brain, and the muscles, and also the placenta. So if you're trying to conceive, if you're trying to build your family, you should consider supplementing with creatine. It turns out that sperm also might use creatine as well, you know, as they're navigating their way uh, to fertilize a, a follicle, right? So that's important. But um, creatine is very important. And there are, you know, many of the, the functional defects in creatine transport proteins and binding proteins and so forth in, in the brain um, are linked with learning disabilities and, and so forth in children. So really important stuff. Um, but most pregnant women don't even consider creatine. And there, there's a lot of vegan and vegetarian mothers to be. And so they should absolutely supplement with creatine. Uh, the doses here are, um, the recommendation is 10 milligrams per kilogram of body weight per day. Okay, so I think that's important for us to sort of enumerate that. Now, talking about throughout the lifespan, well, what about perimenopause, postmenopause? Uh, so here's kind of the five areas where women can benefit from creatine throughout their lifespan. So during menopause, there is a decline in estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone levels that can lead to loss of muscle mass and strength. Creatine, especially when combined with resistant training, may help mitigate this muscle loss and promote muscle strength during a time when lean mass is accelerated at 1.5 pounds per year of loss of lean tissue for women during peri and menopause. Why? Because declining hormone levels. So you want to give your body the best chance at preserving muscle, ladies, and so you should consider creatine. Well, we know that brittle bones are a common concern for women. Osteopenia, osteoporosis, really important. Improving bone health. It turns out that creatine may support bone health by enhancing muscle strength and improving balance, which reduces the risks of fall, of falling. Research suggests that creatine can positively influence bone mineral density when paired with resistance exercise in older postmenopausal women. Creatine has the potential to support bone health earlier in life between the ages of 40 and 50, the time when bone begins to recede, which could have long-term implications for improving health and quality of life for women. The third important reason why women should consider creatine, reduce, reducing fatigue. Fatigue is one of the most common complaints of women in perimenopause. Creatine can reduce fatigue by increasing energy availability in cells, which is particularly beneficial during hormonal fluctuations, they say. Supplementation with creatine is also likely to support greater workout intensity and volume, recovery, quality, and sleep duration following resistance training, which could indirectly affect muscle, body composition, and bone. The fourth, but certainly really important here, is cognitive function. Cognitive changes such as memory losses, and difficulty concentrating are common during perimenopause. Creatine's role in ATP regeneration can benefit brain function, potentially improving cognitive performance and reducing mental fatigue. The fifth and final benefit of creatine for women going through menopause and beyond, supporting mood. Mood swings and emotional changes are common during perimenopause. Creatine may help support a more stable mood by improving overall energy levels and cognitive function. Now, in conclusion, creatine supplementation presents a promising strategy for enhancing various aspects of women's health across the lifespan. Research on creatine supplementation in women has been ongoing for the last two decades, with several studies initially focused on active and older women, but more recently studies have improved their design to account for the menstrual cycle and female sex hormones. This has enhanced the understanding of creatine supplementation in women as, and has influenced their application. The evidence suggests that creatine can improve muscle strength, exercise performance, and body composition, particularly when combined with resistance training. Additionally, creatine may offer cognitive and mood benefits, potentially alleviating symptoms of depression and enhancing brain function, which is an important target area for women in different life stages. While the specific aspects of creatine may vary depending on hormonal fluctuations and life stages such as pregnancy and menopause. 
the overall risk to benefit ratio of creatine supplementation appears to provide more benefit and potential benefit compared to risks. This may likely hold true for all life stages and is still under investigation, most notably during pregnancy. This is important. I think in the next 10 years, like we hear so much about folate, you know, women like, oh, you know, you take your prenatal vitamin and it has, you know, methyl tetrahydrofolate and, and B12 and so forth. Well, what about creatine? Like, why aren't we talking about that? The placenta is that we started off this conversation is very energetically demanding. You're building a new human being. Uh, it's much more energetically demanding than even the eye. So we, we really should be considering that. And I mean, starting out with just eating meat, right? I mean, if you don't want to supplement with creatine, you're like, well, I don't know about the sourcing and blah, blah, blah. Well, definitely make sure you're not getting creatine from China, right? So that's number one, because we know that that's only an 84% material. It's probably not the cleanest stuff that you can buy. You want to get it, get creatine raw material sourced from Germany. Small plug at Myoscience, that's all we offer. Only 100% European sourced creatine, whether it's the micronized version or unmicronized, that's what's in the electrolytes. And electrolytes also, as you likely know, enhance the absorption and transport of protein, or protein of creatine, which is really important. Um, but the the micronization might be better for women, especially if you're suffering or or, or more prone to having gastrointestinal distress. Okay, so what about loading doses for women? Well, I think you know, starting out at just five grams per day is good, and this research article corroborates that. But they do say that brain-based applications here, cognitive performance, mood, and so forth, may benefit from higher doses for a shorter period of time. So it's 15 to 20 grams per day for five to seven days, followed by a five to 10 gram maintenance phase might be optimal to increase brain creatine concentration, which is honestly what I did today. I, My daughter and I, she's out of town and we went to bed super late last night, just like talking and stuff. And I just woke up at four in the morning. We're, you know, so I slept four hours. I'm like, gosh, I have to film these videos. So what did I do? Well, I just took, you know, 15 grams of creatine in divided doses prior to filming. And, you know, I feel like my verbal acuity, I did screw up a, a couple of times. Maybe you'll notice or not. Um, but overall, for only getting a few hours of sleep, you know, creatine has a unique way of helping to, to uh, mitigate uh, the sleep-induced sleep loss associated changes in cognition. So really important stuff, my friends. As always, I appreciate you tuning all the way to the very end. Hopefully you got some value from this conversation. If you did, hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and we'll catch you on a future video down the road.